Okay, people, so that is our fluvial processes. We want to go on to our structural landscapes. And what's very important here, people, is that we are going to have a look at horizontal layers, inclined layers, and massive igneous rocks. Now, that is very, very important. Each one of them, very, very important. Now, the, the horizontal, remember that your horizontal layers and your inclined layers, those are made up of sedimentary rock. And you must know that they are in layers. That's why they call them horizontal layers. Okay. So, for your horizontal layers, you must have a look at the conical eel, at the mesa, and the butte. Now, I'm going to do this by means of photos. All you have to know, you know is uh, the difference between them. Now, this whole area there, once upon a time, millions of years ago, was this one height of that. And then the river started to flow, erosion took place, and it broke up this whole area into different sized blocks. And the biggest sized blocks that it broke it up was the mesa. Now have a look at the mesa, you've got a large flat top, and on top there is a hard layer, a layer called the cap rock, that's on top there, the hard layer, that is your mesa. Now this is what it looks like on a topographical map. If you have a look at this, you'll see that is your large top, hard top here, and here we've got the steep sides, look how close the contours are to each other there. Then we've got the butte and the conical hill. Now have a look at the butte here. Here we've got the butte on this side, and here we've got the conical hill here. Look at the difference between the two. Here on the topographical map, we've got a huge top, large top, larger top here than here. Very small top. And when I show you the photos, you'll, it will be easier for you to see the difference. Look at this. This was Tiebus. This is a photo of the same uh, area that we've just seen on the topographical map. Look at Tiebus. Tiebus will be a conical hill or pointed butte, as uh, some people call them. Have a look at this. This is just smaller than this one. This one will be your butte, uh, coffee, coffee bus here. And just have a look, of, of course, at the hard layer, larger hard layer on top. That would be, remember the difference, the, uh, the differences between the, the two here uh, would be, of course, the, uh, the, 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 the larger hard layer, a very large hard layer that we've got at the butte. And sometimes at the conical, the large layer has completely been uh, removed as well. Now, inclined layers, have a look at this. What's very important at your inclined layers is you must know where the resistant or the hard rock and where the soft rock uh, is found here. So that would be a hard rock and that would be the soft rock. And what's important that you must know here is that the dip slope is always found on the resistant rock. And the scarp slope, slope is always found on the, on the soft rock. Now this is the basis of inclined layers. Now, if we have a look at a photo and a uh, 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 topographical map of of, of landforms, uh, of uh, inclined layers. Have a look at this. This is here at the heart of Brits, close to the heart of Sport Dam. This is the Magallisburgs running here. Now have a look at this slope on that side and compare it with this slope on the other side. Let's see. Firstly, on that side, the contours are far apart. Have a look how far the contours are. Gentle slope. That side you'll find the resistant or the hard layer and the dip slope will be found on that side. On the other side, we will see that the contours here are closer to each other, right? It's steeper slope, softer layers, and on this part, the escarpment you will find on this side. So look at that. Further apart the contours, the contours here are closer to each other. So you'll find your escarpment on that side and the dip, dip slope on the other side. But you also must remember that also because the dip slope is there, you'll find your harder rocks on that side of the mountain. Now let's have a look at a photo of the area. Now this is exactly the, uh, the photo of exactly the same area. Uh, here, here we find the Hartebuy Beersport Dam here, and here's the Magallisburg. Now let's have a look at this. The first thing that you must notice here, look at this, here we, we find a more gradual slope. In other words, it will be the dip slope on that side. The contours would be further, and I've just drawn a few red lines here, just to show you that on this side, the contours would be much further apart. Right? So we would find our dip slope on that side. On that side, the other side, look at the contours here. Now we're talking about this contours here. Look here on the escarpment on this side. The contours are much closer to each other there. And that side would be called the, uh, the escarpment on that side. So people, you must know, when they, when they ask you a question, especially in your, on your topographical map regarding inclined strata, you must know that I must look at my contours. I must look where are the contours far apart, where are the contours close to each other. And once I've established that, then it's quite easy to establish where the gentle slope, of course, obviously is, where my steep slope is, but I will also know where the most resistant part of the mountain is, where I get my dip slope. In other words, where the contours are farther apart, there will be my harder rocks or the more resistant slopes. The last one uh, that we've, we've got here would be the massive 
uh, igneous rocks. Now, people, I'm just going to run through uh, massive in, uh, igneous rocks because this is, this is quite easy. We've got here with our massive uh, uh, um, igneous rocks, you must know um, the laculite, the dike, the sill, pipe, lopalite, and your petrolite. You must know how each of these ones, each of these forms uh, occur. Now, have a look at the petrolites for in instance here. We've got, this is the largest one of your massive igneous rocks that you've got here. It's intrusion here, uh, and it's f f uh, uh, very far below. This is the surface of the earth. See how deep it has been formed here. And uh, it's magma that has cooled off, and this uh, consists mainly of, of granite. Then we've got the lacolith and the lopolith. A lopolith. If you look, you'll see uh, the, the, the difference between the two. Uh, remember that your lacolith is mushroom shaped. There we've got that, okay? And your lopolith is more saucer saucer shape and both of them they have a pipe we got that pipe there that and that pipe is connected with the with a magma source so these these three are actually the most important ones of of of, of the massive in igneous rocks we've also got the dike we've got the sill and we've we've also got the pipe so these people are things that you must know when it comes to uh, massive massive uh, igneous rocks now have a look at this photo now, this we call a tor. Now, if you ever look at, at, at this, then it seems as if somebody has stacked a lot of these stones upon one upon uh, the other one. But actually, this is a natural process. So let's see what happened, uh, how, how has these tors been formed. Again, what's very important is that you must know that here we've got our igneous rock. And just have a look at the difference between these two diagrams. Here we've got the igneous rock. This would be uh, uh, the Earth's surface here. And look here. There we've got the igneous rock, rock at the bottom of the Earth's surface. And here we've got a lot of joints here. Look at all those joints here. Joints and cracks uh, of which your, your, your igneous uh, rocks consist there. Now what happens here there is that mechanical and chemical weathering actually takes place in, 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 in that first stage. But... During the second stage, then we have that the this the the, the 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 this igneous rock that was below the Earth's surface, the surface of the uh, of the of the Earth has been removed by means of erosion, by wind, water, or ice it has been removed, and this rock then appears above the Earth's surface. And then let's just have a look at another photo of of the stores, and then it looks something like that. So people, you must remember that these things were formed deep below the Earth's surface. Um, the surface, uh, the, 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 most of the sand and the stuff that covered it has been removed. And then we get this on the Earth's surface eventually. And these things are called uh, tors. Okay, I would like to conclude our, um, our discussion with uh, slopes and mass movement, which would be the last uh, uh, module of uh, um, fluvial processes and landforms. Now let's just have a look at the slopes and, and mass movements that we've got here. The first thing that we're going to have a look at uh, will be slopes. Now, this that I've drawn here is an ordinary slope that you'll find at the mountain. And what's very important, people, is that you must know that these slopes, uh, you, can, you can divide them into, into, into four different parts, and that's very, very important that you must know this. Now, the first one is right on top, and that is called the crest. The crest is convex, and soil creep usually occurs there. The free face, the following one, you see that is very, very steep, and it's impossible for deposition to take place there. Look at the talus, this would be from year to year. It's a very constant, uh, constant slope, and deposition actually can occur here. And the last one, the pediment, it's concave, there we said, look at the concave, and deposition can also occur uh, yeah. Now, people, these four slope forms, if you ever look at this that we're uh, showing you here on this, on this uh, slide here, it's very important that you must see the following. Firstly, you must know the name of each of the four. You must know that's the crest, the free phrase, the talus, and the pediment. You must know that. The second thing is you must know what it looks like. This one would be convex. That one would be steep. This one is straight and constant. And this one is concave. You must know what it looks like. And the third thing that you must know is what processes do we find by all of these slopes? 
here we find soil creep. Here nothing actually can be found. Okay, the soil creep will also go over the free face here, but the deposition is impossible. Then on this side, uh, tell us there we'll find deposition because what happens is the material that has been eroded falls past the free face and it actually gets deposited there. And your larger rocks that's been uh, 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 eroded here will come down here, fall down here and roll, roll, roll. And eventually it could actually stop here on the, on the, on the pediment. And, uh, and that's why we say that, that um, uh, deposition has taken place there. All right. Remember, between the talus and the pediment, there we find what is called the nick point. Now, the last thing that we want to do has to do with, with mass movement. Now, firstly, uh, if you look at mass movement, you must know that mass movement has to do with the movement of material down a slope. That's movement, mass movement, the mov movement of material down a slope. And the first thing that you must know, people, you must know that there are four different types of mass movement. And these four different uh, types, all of them, all four of them, some of them are slow, and some of them are fast, and some of them are very, very fast. So have a, let's have a look at these four uh, types of ma uh, um, mass movement. The first one we have is soil creep. Now, soil creep is a very slow movement. Here we see soil coming down the slope here. So that would be soil creep, creep a very slow movement uh, uh, taking place here. The second type one of one, a bit faster, would be earth flows. If you look at this, and here we see that, that some of the material has come loose here and it went down here. Now what happened here? Your key word here, a key word here is, is water. That this part of your, of your slope becomes saturated with water. And once it has become saturated of water, then we get that this movement will then begin and it will go downhill. And the third one that's a bit faster than the first two would be landslides. Here we've got a landslide and here we also see, here we've got the ground moving down here, down, this, down the slope here. But your most dangerous one would be your rock falls. Because what happens here? Let's so have a look at this. This is a road going down here. So what happens here is that the rocks here on top of the slope Something has loosened this, 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 this rocks here. And what happens is it starts rolling down, down, down the slope. And of course, it's very dangerous for motorists moving down, down the slope here. We, it's also dangerous. These ones are also dangerous for cars and people moving here. We've got a road going down there. There we will see a road. And uh, people, what happens is um, that these things can bury uh, your car. It can bury you while you, while you are on, on the road at the bottom of a place where, where, where mass movement uh, takes place. So this, is, this is, can be a very, very dangerous thing happening here.